Hi, my name is David Smith. Um, my area is impact of climate change on the construction industry. But I've taken a particular strand of my research here that is to do with the tanks because I think the methodology that's come out of it might have some application in developing world situations. So it's a great dinner party conversation. <laughs> um, so where are they? Well, in Ireland, 38% uh, nearly of the uh, population live in rural areas, and obviously there's a lack of land drainage in, in these kind of rural areas. Which, leads, which has led to a situation where we've got over 400,000 septic tanks in operation uh, in Ireland. And on-site wastewater treatment systems are considered one of the principal sources of groundwater pollution in rural areas. So my first job was to find out well, where are they. So I downloaded data from the CSO and mapped uh, all the septic tanks to electoral division level, worked out the septic tank density, uh, just to get a picture of what's happening in Ireland. Uh, so this is the first uh, map I'd like to show you. The key uh, number here is around, roughly where it turns yellow to red, 15 to 16 septic tanks per square kilometre. In 1977, the US EPA decided that that was the kind of figure where things start to get a bit hairy with uh, groundwater vulnerability and the risks start to increase beyond a, 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 a sensible level. Uh, and as yeah, it's 1985, uh, so the septic tank density has been recognised as the most important factor in influencing groundwater contamination. Um, but uh, another interesting point to note, which is that uh, a lot of the septic tanks, uh, dense, the highest densities appear in the peri-urban area, whereas you'd expect them to be spread all over the country, but they're actually uh, around a lot of the centres, especially Galway, uh, Limerick, uh, Cork. Uh, Dublin, you notice, doesn't have such an extent because main drainage has extended out, so, so we're covered. Um, but the other, th the other point is that septic tank density isn't the only criteria when it comes to groundwater contamination, because the actual groundwater level uh, has a huge impact. Now, uh, I've picked uh, Mayo, quite arbitrarily, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, and why, you see... Why arbitrarily? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see at the top corner there, Kilalit has only has five septic tanks per square kilometre, which, uh, which isn't a big deal, you think. But uh, if you can see here, the EPA Code of Practice 2009 states that you need 1.2 metres of subsoil beneath your septic tank for purification to take place. And these are the groundwater levels uh, from November 2009. This is ground, and this is 1.2 metres. And you can see the groundwater level has eaten up into nearly uh, 0 0.7, like three, quarter, excuse me, three quarters of a metre below ground level. So it's actually come way into the, the EPA's uh, level already. Um, so, you know, in this case, you need to start taking out, you know, you can put adaptive strategies in place, uh, mitigative strategies in place, and you just hope it doesn't rain more. Um, <laughs> but that doesn't really seem to be what's going to happen. Uh, this is modelled increases in precipitation, 6190, 2160, and I mean, this is an annual, uh, an annual uh, calculation. So for winter precipitation, it's actually going to be more extreme, because obviously the annual uh, attenuates the, the, the extreme. So where are we now? Well, this was uh, 2008, the uh, groundwater body status. Um, October 2009, the ECJ delivered a damning indictment of uh, our situation regarding the septic tank uh, and groundwater. So clearly we still have a bit of work to do. Um, but that, this is where we are. So how does this relate to developing countries? Well, urban populations in most developing countries growing faster than rural populations, in a way that mirrors what's been happening in Ireland. The peri-urban areas have really um, become quite intense, and especially in, in developing countries, obviously, uh, sanitation, water quality is, is a huge issue. So, basically, the uh, methodology that uh, has been developed here um, to, to generate the maps that, that I've been working on is initially monitor the septic tank uh, and so pit densities, identify the groundwater levels, and then you can put in in plan in, in um, plans mitigation strategies for changing climate and precipitation regimes. So they're very si three simple steps require various levels of investment and expertise, of course. But is there's, there's, there's little point in building uh, fantastic sanitation for developing countries. If all that's going to happen is that the uh, the, is, the um, effluent is going to leach into the groundwater system, and two kilometres down the road, you have somebody hand pumping from a village well from the groundwater that this is leaching into. Um, so that's essentially uh, how uh, I can see this going into, into a developing country context. Uh, and thank you. That's all I'd like to say about it. Somebody got four minutes. I can interrupt. Yeah. <laughs>